It's about time I take another can of beer and turn it into something cool, all from inside my kitchen slash office space. This time, we're gonna make the can come alive. Okay, first things first, plan, study the can design. What do I like? And can I see in my head what the final video could look like? Spend some time brainstorming. No idea is too ridiculous at this stage. So now I have a vision, lock it down. It doesn't matter how bad your drawings are, get the initial idea down on paper. It doesn't have to be set in stone, but it's easy to forget your exciting initial vision once filming starts. So here's my vision. The can starts in my hand, the camera zooms into the design of the can, and then somehow, we'll tackle this later, the chief, fire dancers, river and stars all animate. I don't know how, but that's my plan. The rest of the film will be filled with generic spinning shots and drink pouring that we've all seen a thousand times before. Not that there's anything wrong with them, I just wanted to add another element that pushed me and gave more of a story to the advert. Right, gear. I'll tell you this, gear doesn't matter. All of what you're seeing from this video, it could have been created with a kit that costs £5,000 or £500. I've shown examples both ends of the spectrum, and even I'm blown away by what can be done on the cheap end. As it's been a while since my last one of these video creations, I wanted to use my best gear just for my own satisfaction. It's my go-to set for food and product shoots, my 1DX Mark II with the 100mm macro lens. Lighting the scene, we have the Godox SL60 to the right, and as a fill, an Aperture F7 on the left. I have my Lazy Susan propped up on a saucepan. I'll explain why in a sec. And on top of her, we have a white plate. And the last but essential piece is a spool of red thread. Random, I know. But the reason for all of this nonsense is to get the right height from the can. The white plate is to make the bottom of the can bright, not grey as it would be without. But the issue was the dip in the plate which hid the bottom of the can. So the best thing I could find in my kitchen which was small enough to not cause reflections on the silver part of the can was this red thread. Now let's talk about the background. Here's a crazy, simple tip that anyone can use to get infinite color options as a background. Use your computer screen, it's that simple. No paper or having to light the backdrop. Your screen does it all for you. And the best part for me as a designer is you can use Photoshop and tweak the colors until they look perfect in camera. Especially useful if you're trying to match a brand color like what I decided to do in this video. So we have a yellow background and as a little something extra on a new layer, I've added a lighter part in the center to the background to give it more interest. And there we go, we're set up for filming. Now here's to the tricky part, animating. Well, it's actually simple, but it took a lot out of my MacBook to achieve. To get the best image to animate from, once I'd filmed, I then took a still photo of where the moving part stops. Then when we blend them together in Premiere, the transition between film and photo is hidden. And then we have our initial, sharp, high-res starting point. After a few tests, the best way of making the can come alive was to do a very simple approach. This involved cutting out all the elements I wanted to have moving and then cloning out where they once were. And then we got a blank can. Then as if by magic, we copied one of the characters and flipped it. When you flip between the different layers, it almost looks like they're dancing. For the fire, I took the cutout into liquify and made the flames different shapes for several layers. And the same approach for the lines in the river. Just liquefy the hell out of them until you're happy. Import all these layers into to a new sequence in Premiere, and then spend the best part of a day working your way through what looked right. Then some horrific keyframe hours later, and the initial vision has become a reality. For the music and sound effects, I use Epidemic for all my audio, and it didn't disappoint for this project. There was no such genre for Indian tribe music, so I had to go halfway around the world to African beats. Sure. I then stumbled upon a few great contenders which had the vibe I was after, but this chosen track sealed the deal as it had an opening voice call out in the song, which I knew I could incorporate into the story. Sound effects, as always, were important for the animation sequence as they help make the story. If we watch the sequence with just the sound effects, you can hear what I was trying to go for, with the camera getting closer, which makes the sound get louder. And the last piece to complete the story was to add some dialogue. So it was time to get into character and let my inner chief out. Un. Join the dance. Release the fire inside. Under, under the, the moon. moon and stars. Feel the flow in your veins. The ghost dance shall reunite the living and the dead to bring peace, prosperity, and unity to Chinookan tribes. Un. Granted, it needed a lot of tweaking in post. The back of the can has a description for the beer, which I used as a guide to help tell the story. And that's it. That is how we have created the film. Uh, let's crack open my last remaining can from this tutorial slash advert and enjoy 
It's ah, oh, it's Chinookan tribe ways. If we take a look at the final film. Release the fire inside, under the moon and stars, feel the flow in your veins. The ghost dance shall reunite the living and the dead to bring peace, prosperity and unity to Chinookan tribes. Cheers. If you like what you saw, if you got anything out of this, if you think it's inspirational and goddamn amazing, then why not give me a like? Uh, why not subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below? I'd love to hear your thoughts on my creation. Until next time, keep the tribe real. Enjoy the Chinookan way. Un.